All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is a Falcon Paladin here with another edition of Casting Your Replays. Let's see. Fiat was here first. Momin was here. Escalade was here early. Christian was here. Eric was here. Thank you very much for screening my replays, Eric. I appreciate it. Eldor, Nathan Lafferty was watching Megalovania in 6-8 time when he got a notification for this video. Kelmori's here. Dead Infested is here. Norman is here. Eamon Adawi is present. Hello, boys and girls, and the magical rainbow in between. <laughs> Alien Battle 5 Smash Stats slash Democracy is here, too. Are those the names? Those are the names of the people that are here? I think so. Ramsey Schumacher showed up. Pavel is present. Ross Pate member. James Mayeski, also a member, is here. With a cinnamon emote he can use because he's a member of the channel by clicking join down below. Excuse me. Good morning, Ramsey. Things are good. I'm a little, I'm a little waking up here, but you know what? That's how it is on Sunday mornings. This is our Sunday mass, hey Santiago. Uh, I need to actually adjust where this chat is because currently it's a little over there. That is exactly where I want y'all, right there. Yeah, but Schumacher. Like, there was a, uh... Oh, wasn't there, like, a NASCAR driver named Schumacher for a long time? That was really good. You want me to play with Terran, do you? That's right. Smash Stats is here. Smash that like button. Search Smash Stats on YouTube for another StarCraft channel. You can find them out there, man. You certainly can. Alright, we're all the way in... October. Holy cannoli. We have a lot of good replays here. Only one of them did not make the cut this week. So if you're on this list, be happy. Eric likes all of your replays. What's up, Vien? Vien Le? Ah, hello to Belarus. You're not the only person from Belarus to say hello on this channel. I can tell you that much. Beard strokes to start up the stream, Kilmori. All right, one... Oh, is he a F1 driver? I'm sorry, I don't. I'm not actually super into uh, to race carring. I just know a little bit. Dead says October is the best month. Very good. All right, so we always like to start off with a fairly shorter replay, but it appears everyone is sending me 30-minute games today. So, oh nope, just kidding. We got a TVP fast mech win. Sure, why not? It's short. Let's see how it is. Sounds reasonable. Going to... Let's red versus blue this sucker. And let's go. So left-hand corner it is... Or it's not even a corner, it's just a side. <laughs> it is the blue Protoss player. View. And then we have one dot exclamation mark up top, which is a really familiar name. But I cannot recall who it is exactly. So go figure. We'll figure that out together, y'all. Halo Infinite looks interesting. It's very combat evolved, which I guess is a good thing for people who are interested in that level of nostalgia, yo. But personally, I don't know. Like, I like Combat Evolved. I played it back when it came out. My first console was an Xbox. And I got Halo with it, because obviously. And it was really fun. And I used to play with my roommates, because I was in college at the time. And one of my roommates hated the fact that one shot with a shotgun from close range was enough to kill you. We would play Capture the Flag on Blood Gulch. And uh, I'd be waiting for him, and he'd try to sneak in, and I'd go, POW! And blow him away, and he would get so upset. He thought it was not fair. 
so that's my memories of multiplayer Halo. Yeah, 1v1 fastest is a little bit odd, for sure. My beard is doing actually fairly well today, Norman Achenbach. Got some uh, beard cream in it. It's feeling nice and fluffy and smooth. What's up, Holger Mueller? Double gate forge opening, probably for defensive cannons. While you put some pressure up. I know, that's what I always said. I was like, look man, if you have a shotgun and you shoot me in the chest from a foot away in Halo, I will also die. So like, I don't know why you think this is not fair. I'm not hacking or anything. What's up, Rad Velocity? So it looks like maybe trying to set up some kind of a forward pylon here for uh, cannons, I guess. Oh, this... this setup right here is so good. Oh, these marines in there. So hard for zealots to kill them. There's already vultures out, too. Ah, the zealots are getting a couple kills, but boy, howdy. That is not going to work out for the zealots at all. I think a marine died. The cannon rush has commenced. You need to get down here and start killing these. I don't think you can see them is the problem. Yeah, he doesn't know these cannons are coming up. This is a little bit interesting. Alright, man. The cannons are coming up. It's not exactly a contain. You can slip around here. And get something done. And speed isn't done yet, obviously. And the vultures are like, oh. Oh. My goodness. That's, uh, that's a lot of stuff you have set up here, Mr. View. Yay, a new Sunday routine. Excellent. <laughs> it's just a lot of early zealots is very good. So you're going to get this cannon. Congratulations. Probably going to get this cannon too. Congratulations. Hey, Lawrence. Yes, things are good here. I hope you're doing well. Uh, machine shop on the way with siege mode coming in. So, unfortunately, vultures that come out of this factory are subject to cannon fire. Yeah, vultures just aren't going to break this contain. They're really good against the zealots that keep coming in. But they're not good against the cannons, as we can see them taking big time hits and just not doing much damage at all. So, tank comes in. Zealot really wants to kill that, not able to do so. That zealot rocks into two vultures being supported by SCVs. This is a lot of mech we're pumping all of a sudden, and a lot being invested into cannons. Ah, the run by. Ah, uh -huh, we talked about the run by. <laughs> oh, Escalade. Special requests? Um, sure. I guess I can hold off on those until you give me the okay. All right, so all these probes are dead, which means you need to get something done now, but you can't because all you have are cannons, man. All right, so probe count goes to uh, zero, basically. Hey, congratulations, Christopher Johnston. I'm glad you survived the move. It's not easy. Not easy to survive a move. There are four probes out. I guess some of them escaped. Where are they? Here's one. The cannon shows... Ah, there we go. Tank shows up and Protoss is like, what's that? I don't have any economy whatsoever. <laughs> the vultures are slow because they don't have vulture speed. Surprise. Sometimes you don't get vulture speed right away upon getting vultures. All right. 18,000 points there for one dot, exclamation mark, 12,000 points for view, 33 to 9 kill ratio is pretty fantastic. And resources, a lot more gas, zero gas mine for the Protoss. Go figure. Yeah, I always sound this way at the start of my Sunday stream. I'm just, ugh, I need to clear out a little bit after waking up. 
is generally how that works. So let's go back to October, as Dead said, the best month. Did you say Betty White chase music? I think we Benny Hill chase music. I like that you called it Betty White chase music, though. That was good. I do like Betty White. Okay, we gotta find a replay that is not Escalade, because he's eating. So... Stay hydrated. Ah, so here's one that uh, Democracy slash Smash Stats sent last week and did not make the cut. Or we just didn't cast it, or something. He sent it two weeks ago, maybe? Whatever. Let's do it. Seems reasonable. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of Hydralisks involved, though. For spoiler purposes. Alright, so Team 1 here, top left, is the blue Zerg player, Democracy, otherwise known as Smash Stats. He's got his own YouTube channel. Click his name here in chat. You'll go there. The enemy. We've got ourselves... Oh, wait, I assume that was Smash. It is. Okay, and then we have Spike. And then we have... Looks like Andrew, but without any A's. It's like Sizzrew. And then Lars of Decatur. We're going to... You know what? Uh, we're going to keep the colors, because it's just Protoss versus Zerg here. That makes a lot of sense. I don't think we're going to change it to red versus blue. Protoss, Zerg. Colors don't matter. ARJB hey, TV cast. What's up, RJB? How's it going? I got your replay that you sent, because I always do. You didn't send it like an hour ago so that was cool there's some really strong Diablo conversation going on in chat right now what's up I uh so my experience with Diablo is I have played all the way through Diablo 2 the campaign that was back in, I want to say, spring 2001, when I was in college, in my dorm. That was a good time. Boy, did I not pass that semester of college. Played a bit of multiplayer, never really got into it, though. And then played about two seconds of Diablo 3 and said, nope, I've clicked enough in my life, and I never actually got any further at it, so... Not much of, the, of a Diablo fan, personally. Yeah, Diablo 3 Real Money Shop got removed from the game soon after it came out, after Blizzard realized what a stupid idea that was. They just booted it. <laughs> it was years later? Alright, so the cannon rush is coming up here for Stew. He's trying to get Sunkins up, but nope. I mean, some of them might finish, like this one right here, maybe. Oh my gosh, it finished. It got one hit off before it died. <laughs> Good call, Smash. Meanwhile, oh, both Zealot players are coming up to murder the Zerg that is not democracy. Oh no, bad times. Hey, welcome, Twisted Wards. Twisted Words. Glad you could make it here to the stream for your first time. You know what? He's surviving somehow. He just, well, not somehow. He made a whole ton of Sunkins, and that's how you survive this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, these Sunkins are happy. Yeah, that semester for me was a lot of StarCraft and a lot of Diablo and uh, not a lot of going to class, it turned out. Hero Hydralisks from Democracy have arrived. Hey, what's up, Squeal? How's it going, man? Oh, 
Wait, is this Escalade Smash? Am I not supposed to cast this one because it's Escalade? Okay, the cannons are gone. Another wave of Zealots coming in. They have speed now, which makes them ultimately scarier. Oh, they're trying to finish off the lair, and they will. All right, so they got the lair, which means democracy is in a 1v2 scenario right now. Um, I guess there is some long-distance mining possible here to use extra hatcheries, which is very good. Oh, they're trying to snipe down the Hydralisk then too, but that's not going to happen. The Lings take care of that post-haste. Extra Zealots pulling on out of there. So it's okay. So it's still income, but it's long-distance mining income here for Sidisidu, which name I cannot pronounce at all. Man. Ah, I see Smash. Okay, that makes sense. I think the <laughs> the thing I remember most about Diablo 2 when I played it 20 years ago was the uh God, was it the Fist of God build for Paladin or basically you just called down bolts of lightning and they attacked enemies. You didn't have to target anything. It was insanely overpowered. And then two, when I was playing the campaign, I managed to somehow save my game right at the moment of death on the final Diablo boss. So I'm fighting him, and like I died and hit save, and it was a quick save scenario where my most recent save before that was like five hours ago, right? If not even longer. And so I tried so hard to like load that game and throw down a potion and survive, but nope. Wasn't able to do it and had to go back and replay like the last five to eight hours of the campaign again. It was funny. Oh, Zealot's got the Hydralisk Den, but there's another one over here, so. Less of a victory than you might think. So we got Dragoons out. Loving that from Lars of Decatur. Zealot's coming in here trying to kill Democracy, but he has a lot of hiders, and he's got Lurkers out, too. Yeah, I mean, these Zealots really, honestly, probably shouldn't even be here. And the drop tech and the speed on the overlords. All right, you got six cannons here. I don't know if that's enough to save you from what's coming. Democracy wants you dead. Although, I don't know, that's not quite as much stuff as I thought. Maybe he said this one too. Hey, congratulations on making a ring squeal. Very nice. A 40 minute, what was that? What a uh, matchup was it? Oh, the forge is gonna die. It's not making any upgrades, so it's not as big of a deal. Dragoon pressure coming in against Sidhu. He doesn't have much. He's got some lings, which is what you want, but I don't think it's enough Zerglings, which is a problem. Some Zealots do respond. The cannons are helping keep stuff alive for the most part here. Ah, PBT. What's up, Zgat3? Welcome to the stream. My dragoons are murdering this poor defenseless Zerg player. Lurkers, kind of murdering a little bit, but uh, Spike Your Cell has 35 workers, so I don't think any spines got up into the large group of probes there, so nope, we're good. Hydra's push in front. Everyone patrolling on the other side. Guess what? Your front door's wide open. There's two Nexus here, here for some reason. Dragoon's continuing to push over on this direction. Maybe sniping down the Hydralisk then would be cool. 
But I don't think he's really paying attention to these guys as much as he should. He's really worried about getting dropped when the front door is getting pushed in. So, alright then. Taking down both these robos would be fantastic. The observatory dying would be really nice, too. And hey, let's get all of those things. Goal accomplished. More Dragoons and Zealots coming up from the south trying to deal with the incursion of 1-1 Hydralisks when they don't have any upgrades themselves. These Dragoons are still alive. 11 and 7 kills. You know, if they'd gotten the Hydralisk then, they could have denied an upgrade and been really... I mean, that would have been really nice. Democracy's at 90 supply. Lars of Decatur is at 98 supply. Democracy continuing just to pump them Hydralisks and morph them Lurkers. Hydras continuing to push on up. Basically, it's Democracy versus Lars right now. Sadu and Spike aren't doing super great. They're the two players that have been attacked pretty consistently today. And all right, so those Hydra's dead, severely outnumbered. Upgrades are good, but not that good. More Dragoons and Zealots coming on out. And the Hydra count going pretty well. Hive upgrading here from Democracy. Uh, Stu is at 30 drones, which is, you know, not great. Lars is only at 38 probes, which seems low. He could probably stand to make a few more probes, and he is, I guess, with his... One Nexus. Oh, no. You have to have a backup Nexus. I think Lars is doing great. He's just making a couple mistakes. Yeah, I mean, this here, Pea Green, is at 60 total supply. Spike's only at 74. So, I mean, he's hanging in there. He's doing a good number two. Democracy and Lars have the biggest armies, but their teammates are exactly disappearing on them. Greater Spire coming in. At about 14 minutes, Mass Hydra moving out. This is not a good angle to attack. It's a nice spread here on these Dragoons. A lot of Hydras in the back not able to do anything whatsoever. Again, upgrades are just really big. It's 2-2 two, two Hydras versus 0-0 zero, zero on these Dragoons. Yeah, I mean, this is just not... The Dragoons are doing good work, because again, they have the Concave, but the Hydra 2-2 is just, it's just too much. It's going to break through here. Also, reinforcements keep coming in, and there are no reinforcements for Lars at all. He needs to send up another group of Zealots, I would guess, to support. Spike is helping. <laughs> Number two humor. And here we go. Ling Hydra versus Dragoon is just a lot better than just Hydralisks, it turns out. No Dark Swarm at all for these Hydras. That's okay. Sheer, just sheer numbers are going to be good enough. Hey, what not exclamation mark? You showed up. Yeah, you were the first game cast. It was really well done. I don't know why he keeps walling off with Nexuses, but okay, friend. Once again, pushing up. Ah, oh, Mass Mutalisk. Okay. I was waiting for Guardians, but instead it just Mass Muta sniping that Nexus. And then taking this one down means no income for Spike. And the Hydras are killing your stuff anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So the probes have nowhere to go. All their nexuses are dead. And it's turned into kind of a 1v1 scenario here of democracy versus Lars. Although, I don't know. How you doing over here? Stadu, Stadu. 103 supply. 52 drones. Could be worse. He's got a bunch of hiders and lurkers out. He's going to come pile on. Of course, Spike is just not having a good day. 
Yeah, Spike City got 10,000 minerals and 3,700 gas. Okay. So Spike has a little home away from home down here. Yes. We got his own Nexus coming up, which is great. Green's got his hiders and his lurkers out. Zealot patrolling this way, just trying to make sure that no drops or like guardians arrive, because that's I assume that's what we're working on. Is this all the mutas you have left? No, here they are. Still not as many as they had before, but that's what you get for attacking into a ton of cannons. Wow, that is a lot of Stargates for apparently carriers, but he's not producing any yet, and nor does he have the money for it, because he's only at 46 workers right now. He had some plans, he just didn't keep it up with the macro. Are the mutas just going to try to do it? I guess they could. But, I mean, Guardians would be better? That's a lot of cannons, yo. Okay, maybe. <laughs> All right. That didn't go super well. This is not going to happen either. Uh, I guess they found Spike's other home away from home, and they're going to snipe that. So we're just going to Ling Hydra this. He's like, you know what? We have a couple Guardians. Just kidding. We have a lot of Guardians. I like the Corsair answer to this. Great against the Mutas, pretty darn good against the Guardians too, especially if they stack up. Yeah, this Mass Corsair thing against the stacked Guardians, it's not doing a ton of damage, but it will kill them. Yeah, I mean, so the Guardians ended up getting what? A couple Stargates, which, eh. I mean, they were nice for the Corsairs, obviously, but otherwise. Yeah, I really think Lars here has some great ideas, but just didn't have the income for it. The continued Hydra pressure is going to do well because this isn't like 50 cannons. This is four cannons, or was four cannons, and now it's gone. And unfortunately, the Corsairs are not an answer to Hydralisks at all. Yeah, so Lars is just mineral starved. He's only at 46 probes. He's not... doesn't have the number he needs. He's going for Disruption Web. Which kind of sort of works in this scenario, but not really. And that's it. Lars is left, has left the game. Spike has left the game too, and that's a win. It's a win for democracy and democracy everywhere, as well as, I guess, seduce. Whatever that name is. I still, I mean, seriously, man, come on. Help us out a little bit. SDS, DWEW, ridiculous. Yeah, no storm is a problem too, John Kevin. Good call. That would have been really nice. Democracy killed it in every category. Uh, Lars killed more stuff, but got outproduced in a 2 to 1 ratio, so that's not going to work. Spike lost all of his things, and resource-wise, Spike was just lagging behind even, uh, well, comparable here to SDS, who got his main base killed, so. Escalator, you back? Yeah, Reavers would have been really nice too, actually. True facts. Any kind of splash. Escalade. 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 Where is Escalade? Escalade? Nah, they use Storm in fastest map all the time. Storm drops are huge. Uh, communications. Squeal of Fortune. Escalade. Don't see any Escalades. There's Enthamine. That's not Escalade, though. That's Democracy. Yes. 
Hey, Anthony Garcia. Happy Sunday to you, too. Hey, Korhan. What's up? Come back. You guess. Where is comeback, though? Back when Ultra Rush. Ah, 2v2 comeback. There, there's Escalade. Excellent. What's up, Demian? Welcome to the stream today. Nice. Smash, we are the same. Okay, here we are. 2v2. It's going to be Dead Infested and Hatchery Cake versus Critter and Escalade. Top right hand corner, Dead Infested. We saw him last week. Top left, Hatchery Cake. Bottom left, Critter149. And Escalade, bottom right here. So red versus blue tells us this is going to be two Zergs versus the other guys. So I think we'll keep colors for this. The Zergs versus the Protoss and Terran. Did I get the Bitcoin? Did you send me new Bitcoin fiat? When? I've got, I mean, I don't know. I got one like two weeks ago. Ever done a Leroy Jenkins in StarCraft? Dude, all the time. Holy crap. That is my strategy, is I just go, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I really, like, my biggest skill, my biggest weakness in StarCraft is recognizing, okay, this engagement is not going well, pull back. I'm always like, I can do it! I, I can do it! I only have six slings left, and they have seven Archons! It's really bad. Yes, I did get that one then, Fiat. Thank you for the donation, I appreciate it. I think I have like $200 in Bitcoin right now over all the years of donations. The $5 donation I got in 2012 has turned into something okay, I guess. Well, I mean, low APM, you can get away with it if you're, you know, Protoss or if you're Terran. Zerg low APM is just unheard of. So, Stargate opening, expanding quite nicely here is dead, going for that Spire off of two bases. No two gas, so I assume it's just going to be for some Scourge to handle the early Corsairs. Really nicely done. Academy on the way from Terran. Lair now finishing up for Hatchery Cake. It's got a macro hatch at the natural, loving that. Corsairs have arrived, but we got spores and we almost have Scourge. So the timing a little bit late there, but the spores make up the difference. Keep your overlords alive. That is still supply blocked a little bit, but could be worse. All right, Exo Neo should be a good one. Got some lings out on the map here. Bit of a push from Escalade. I don't think really attempting to be game ending, but nice. Oh, targeting. A little bit of targeting on the Dragoons there. Not a whole ton. But there's one, two Mutalisks, four Mutalisks out, and a couple Scourge with a couple Zerglings on the ground here, too. So the Mutas are fighting. Three Dragoons is a little bit scary, but hey, there's help in the form of friendly Zerglings against these Dragoons, and they will die quickly. Corsairs are cruising in to try to deal with the... Oh, good Scourge hit. Takes down one of the Corsairs. The Mutas have to pull back to the Spores, and that means the Corsair has to get out. Trying to get these Sunkins up, and they will finish in time to help. And clear this out, man. Ah, they're both going Mutalisks right now. That one Corsair is dead. Muta's doing really well against these Dragoons, too. And nice hold. Really, really nice hold there from Team Zerg. Wow, third base up from Hatchery Cake. Who's Hatchery? Is that somebody that I know? 
Like, I know everybody else in this game. Is Hatchery Cake just a random that you decided to play with? Either way, Escalade is taking a natural base behind it. It's almost done. Got themselves a Templar Archives. Storm would be insanely good against two Zergs. Critter here. Looks like he's doing kind of a high... Oh, it's mostly mech. With that third factory coming in in the one barracks. So I like it. I like... Marines. Just enough Marines with some tanks. Goliaths in the mix there too. Speeding it up. The Mutas are here. And in pretty good numbers to repair. Repair. Oh no, not repairing. Escalade's getting stormed, but it is an absolute mess here in Critter's main base. Critter's down to 21 total SCVs. The stacking is actually pretty good from Hatchery Cake. Hey, what's up, Sylvie? Yes, I know Eric is Critter. Oh, yeah, I guess you guys are not aware. Could you guys tell me if this hatchery cake person is somebody that we know? Or if it's just a rando? I don't know if we got that answer, but... Anyway, the mutas are out here for dead infested. There's a Corsair here to handle all of them, which seems not enough. The mutas don't seem to be interested. There we go. Are they? Yes? No? You going in, friends? It's time to go in. Yeah, so there's your storm. Oh, gosh, that was a good storm. <laughs> oh, Hatchery Cake is dead of Fessence, friend. Got it. Got it, got it. Oh, dead. All your mutalisks are dead. Except for this one. And he knows his friends are dead because of the connection they have through the Overmind. That hurts. Why are we staying over here? I don't understand. But, um, yeah, Hatchery Cake doing some good stuff. He's got Lurker Ling Mutalisk here, which is going to do really well against this whole Marine Medic tank thing. Couple Goliaths out. Critter's replacing his SCVs as well as he can. He's got a pretty good saturation on both of these bases, too. And here we go. Ling Muta Lurker attack. Very, very scary coming in. And the Lurker is getting some very nice damage done here. The Muta is taking a lot of hits from the Marines, though. And Lurkers are not supporting as well as they could be back here. That Bunker being alive is really excellent. As another Mutalisk dies, Lurkers are stabbing away. Comsat going to help kill at least that Lurker. There we go. Took that one out. Hey, what's up, Compassion? Happy Sunday. Things are good here. Just casting some StarCraft. Oh, the High Templar snipes! Though... Golly, oh, mostly stormed his own zealot there. That was... That could have been better.
Do -do 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 My kid is he likes Protoss the most, Mickey 90. Another race coming up here. I mean, this is Hatchery Cake just macroing like a boss. Dad's got his third rolling, but that's a fourth coming up for the Grayzerg player. So on their back feet right now is the Terran Perotos team. On two bases, really not super comfortable with taking a third, feels like. Lurgers on top of the ramp is just stupid, stupid hard to break for sure. Some more lurker pressure at the front here, but like there's dragoons and there's science vessels and there's all sorts of great stuff. super comfortable with my kids being on the stream like I know a lot of parents do have their kids all over their YouTube channels and stuff but I try to keep them off until they're older so good pressure here from Escalade is going to take down the fourth base of Hatchery Hydra Lurker push coming in here against Escalade. That is so many Lurkers, though. But my gosh, they are taking hits from these Dragoons. Actually, hold on. Are these different? Oh my gosh. Is this friendly fire? Did the Lurkers' friendly splash hurt the other Lurkers? Because this is red and gray. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what mostly killed those lurkers were each other. Because if you're in a team game and you have lurkers, the splash from your lurkers will harm your friendly units if it catches them. Wow. So yeah, medics will heal any biological units on the ground. So they'll heal Zealots, they will heal Friendly Hydras and Lurkers and Ultralisks and Zerglings and stuff. No problem. Yeah, Zealot Medic is actually kind of insanely good. So left side is now being taken by, well, Hatchery Cake was here, but Critter's taking it now with a little support from Escalade. Lurker pressure. So Lurkers are great against Protoss if you have Dark Swarm to handle the Dragoons. If you don't, the Dragoons will pick them apart. Medics cannot heal Mutalisks because they're flying units. They don't heal anything that's not on the ground. SCVs cannot repair Protoss, no. Hey, thanks for the $5 super chat, Philip. Appreciate that, Philip. You, very nice. Coming through with the super chat on a Sunday, oh yeah. I like the DTs out here too, wow. Okay, so three bases for Protoss, three bases for Terran, three bases for each of the Zerg. The math does not add up here at all. The longer this goes on, the worse it's going to be for the Zerg players. And if, I mean, if, here's the thing. If your opponents are using 
storm and spells and stuff. You need Dark Swarm. I just, at some point, we are getting a hive. You need it, for sure. A couple tanks wander up here by themselves and get absolutely massacred. Yeah, that's not happening. Observer up. Lurker's dead. Hydra's coming in to protect the Lurkers a little bit, though. One of them goes down anyway, but the other ones do get saved by their Hydra list buddies. I want to see one of the Zergs try to take the middle. Yeah, the hatchery cake sitting at 8,000. 3,000. It's just got Larva sitting here doing nothing, going for a Ling drop. He could make like eight Ultras right now if he wanted. But his production tab is effectively empty, so he's going for a Ling Lurker drop here at Critter's third. Unfortunately, the Hyder's continuing to press in here. The Lings try to snipe down the command center, but that's probably a mistake. I think they could have taken down these Goliaths. I think they can still take down these Goliaths, because there's nothing in that bunker there. Twelve hiders in production at a time. Hatchery cake is still nothing. I think his army supply right now is literally zero. There you go. Six ultralisks. And six pairs of lings. And he's got 2,000 more gas in his bank. He just needs to make a bunch of overlords. And just max out at this point. Because he's got the cash for it. You've been trying to infest the command center. Lurker does go down to the storm. Nicely done, High Templar. Hearing tank fire, and I don't know where it is. You? Nope. Huh. Again, Hydro Lurker really good against this, but you need that Dark Swarm to protect your stuff. The medic uses restoration on a dragoon. Does it turn it into a zealot? No. Good question, though. Sniping? Oh my gosh. Sniping the obs, but. <laughs> Storm, good unit. We're just going to A move the ultras in over here. Uh, they have no attack upgrades, but they do have three armor, which is great. Rawr, the ultras. Critter gonna just GG out at this point. Yeah, I mean, what you're gonna want against this is basically either a lot of Marines with great upgrades or a lot of Siege Tanks to handle this many Ultralisks. Critter wants to play Protoss. Terran makes me scream. Yeah, playing Terran, if it makes you scream, is probably bad. But Dead's going to lose his third base here, which is not ideal. This High Templar does get sniped out. A little bit careless on that front, but plus two attack on the Dragoons. Versus plus two attack on the Hydras. And the numbers here... We're getting pretty good. The Ultras are just happily destroying all of the buildings that Critter's been working on so hard today. Ling's trying to take down this one final base that remains, but you know what? It's still alive. Critter's not dead over there yet. He irradiates a couple Ultralisks, so they do harm each other while they're getting harmed. Zealots and Dragoons pushing up. Again, a Lurker, not bad against this, but without Dark Swarm, 
different story. Plague is on the way. Whoa, Dead Infested leaves the game. Not much of a bank today and just got largely stormed into oblivion. Especially with the plus two attack there. Hatchery Cake. It doesn't have as much gas left anymore. His production tab is empty. The altars are trying to take down Critter. But suddenly he has a Protoss army at his front door. If he just made, I mean, maxed out on Lings here, he'd be fine. All these Dragoons would die, but he's not making stuff. That's a problem. In StarCraft, your main goal is to make stuff. And he's just not making stuff. His production tab is empty and he has 9,000 minerals in the bank. Some panic zerglings here would do wonders. Oh, did he irradiate? Oh, he's boxer maneuvering over here. <laughs> nice critter. The ultras aren't actually going to be as good as zerglings would be. Dude, Hatchery Cake is refusing to use his larva on anything, and it's killing me. Uh, okay. He's just like, well, I had my ultras, and um, that's all I can make, I guess. Wow, Escalade, just killing everything. Takes out both Zerg players. Well, this ultra is here, but it's not really doing much. Dude, dead infested. Tell Hatchery Cake to spend his money. I feel like the last five minutes or more of this match was him not spending his money at all. It's triggering me, and Hatchery Cake leaves the game. Was he attacking? I mean, I guess. Not really doing a whole lot, but rough stuff, man. And yes, the storms, in fairness, the storms were brutal. Like, those are some really nice storms from Escalade, so GG. Critter and Escalade come out on top. Escalade doing the killing. 226 units killed, lost 85. Very nicely done. Hatchery Cake produced 289 units, only killed 131. The ratios are bad. Yeah, all of these resources from Hatchery Cake and just nothing. Nothing. All right, well, you know what's probably time for is an RJB replay. Because it is Sunday, and that means it's an RJB replay time. I don't remember. Here it is. <laughs> I think this is the one. Yep, Bing Su. 3v3 on New Super. Happy Sunday, modest one. Uh, it is kind of a Halo, all the Halo poster in the background. Nintendo. It's got all of the different covers from each of the different Halo games in a, uh, around the edges. And the Master Chief in the center. What's up, Tristan Jason? Uh, I can do Ultra Rush after this one. Sure. Absolutely. So yeah, click on RGB's name there. Go to his channel. Check it out. Top side, we got Bing Su. That's RJB because he has a new name every week. Not kidding. Is that Sicky? Are you playing with Sicky in this game? What the heck's going on? And then Buckfast down left. Got Kronks on team two. Dude, favorites in here. Holy smokes. And Silence Please is in two. Okay, all right, this is interesting stuff. We got RJB playing with Sicky, apparently, and favorites on the other team. Favorite, the winner of the Falcon Paladin Brood War $200 open that we had last month. <laughs> hey, number one villain. So what I've been doing, that is Sicky, all right. I've been actually casting the patron replays out on Twitch, and I'll go ahead and ex export them to YouTube here in a bit, but it's in a Twitch VOD at the moment. I'll send you an email where uh, where your replay was cast so you can watch it. I mean, you can fast expand like this. You just make a really fast nexus. 
Nintendo. Uh, yeah, is Siki the Hungarian? I think he is. I've cast some Siki. I like him a lot. He's a really, really good player. And then Favorite's really good, too. Playing Terran, though. I don't think I've seen him play Terran. Wasn't he either... Oh, maybe he was. Whatever. It's fine. He's good with all the races, I bet. Everybody played a random. Okay, that's cool. What about some marine pressure? He's getting absolutely shut down by Zerglings here from Siki. <clears throat> really nice control. Also, just enough of them here to take down the Zealots while we're at it. Hey, greetings to Poland. <clears throat> Under Sej. <laughs> Flash caught a bye in the first round. Nice. Yeah, dude. Flash playing Zerg. I need to see that. I want to see what he does with it. So, big surprise. Lot of Zealots out here in this fastest map in the first five minutes. A lot of Lings and Zealots pushing top left right now, which is not great. Silence, please, is getting a little bit beat up on. And this bunker protect is weird. What the heck is this? Why do you do it out here? All right. Well, the Zealots got to run by. They're going to jump on top of some of those. Uh, the probes are fighting. The cannon doing a little bit of work, but ends up going down to the Zerglings as well. And this is just a lot, man. <clears throat> this is a lot of stuff here. This is silence, please, right? Yeah, so those 20 probes still fighting a little bit. And we do have some friendly Marines and Zealots that showed up to save the day. Trying to take down the Nexus, but didn't get much damage done there at all. And everybody settles in as the Protoss music plays overhead. Yeah, Siki's just got a bunch of lings out, which tells me he's going for something else, but I don't see a lair or anything yet. It's really just going to be a lot of lings. These poor marines, just not going to trade well versus anything here. The fire bats are what you need, which is why we have a couple of them out. Yeah, so both Terran players kind of pushing bunkers out in the middle of the map. Which is interesting. Uh, yeah, the bunkers trying to save the day here. The Zealot's not quite sure where to engage and are therefore just going to avoid the whole situation. They want to attack out in the open. Ling's still trying to get some stuff done top left, not really doing much there. Hey, what's up, Lawnmower Man? Welcome to the stream today. Happy Sunday. Do this mass firebat stuff with stim and medics. It's kind of awesome. Uh, yeah, we're going to be playing some StarCraft after these, after these replays. Oh, they bunker so it's harder to cannon contain. I gotcha. Weird engagement over this way. Terran is running away from. 
The Sunkins are worth their weight in gold right now against this bio and against these Zealots, too. So that's why you gotta have those Sunkins, man. And that's a hold for Siki. Not too bad. I do like we're kind of reaching out towards the middle with both of the Terran here, which is funny. Really? Just barracks, gateways, spawning pool stuff here so far. Nobody's really teched up to anything else. DTs are in production for Buckfast. Trying to take out one of these bunkers at least, and they do end up taking it down. But not much more than that is happening as the Zelts are running into a lot of marine fire there. Yeah, Medic Ultra would be pretty nuts, Dad. Cannot disagree with that one. Yeah, Ultra Pathing. Better than Goliath Pathing, but that doesn't say much. Zealots a little bit far from home. They're going to end up dead there. Uh, the push right side top does get wiped out as RJB holds with Dragoons and Zealots mostly again. Hey, what's up, Hunter? Welcome to the stream this morning. Happy Sunday. Reavers would be pretty good here. I agree, Nintendo. Production tabs has a lot of storm for Protoss, which is good. There's a robotics facility coming up here, too. From Buckfast again. Uh, Siki's had some time, so he's got some lurkers out now with, to support his Hydralisks. It is a lot of bio here. Both uh, Favorite and Kronks are just going Marine Medic with some Fire Bats mixed in. And the fact that Storm isn't quite done yet for some of these Protoss players, and it makes it a lot better. The High Templar are already to rock. There it is. Well, Storm's done down here, that's for sure. That is why we don't see a lot of Bio versus Protoss games on the channel, everybody, in case you've ever wondered. Oh, Hydra's trying to snipe down that shuttle. Oh my gosh, that shuttle. Oh, that shuttle was so important to not die. And now it is dead. High Temple are popping out. Not enough energy for a storm right away, though. Continued pressure coming in from Zealots and Dragoons. The hold on the bottom side is still holding. Looks like Favorite coming up from the south to try to help protect. Silence, please. What's up, Hero Mutalist? And yeah, Dead Infested has his channel, too. So if you are ever like, man, I wish Falcon cast more than he does. Well, you know what? Maybe check out some of the other channels available. Dead Infested... Smash stats, RJB. A lot of people here are interested in casting StarCraft and are doing it very well. Yeah, so we're 11 minutes in. Looks like everyone's in pretty good position right now. Got a couple players around 80 supply. Everybody else is at 100. Storm is terrifying. I'm pretty sure Nathan Lafferty is being sarcastic here.
Yeah, I mean, this much stimmed bio against gateway units is just going to crush it. Protoss's answer to this is Storm. It's a really good answer, in fairness. But it's really the only answer. I guess some Reavers would be nice, too. It's the same thing against, like, uh, Zerg, and Zerg everything, right? Yes. So suddenly, Siki's in a bit of a rough spot. I don't see any Lurkers really in position here. These Archons are such a good answer, too. Just melting some of these Hydralisks. In numbers, Archons are good against Hydras. Got some High Templar coming up, trying to save the day from Team Red. And look at the... Oh, look at the snipe on the Hydras, though. Beautifully played by Favorite. Nicely done. Sicky. suddenly in a really bad position right now. Dude, where are you? RJP, help your buddy. No help. No help at all. Dude, High Templars are fragile in Brood War and in StarCraft 2. 100%. There's a single Zealot down here. Just um, going to town on some of these SCVs, which is hilarious. Alright, so finally RJB shows up to help. And this little group is going to get wiped out. So do have some cannons in the middle. Again, the Terrans poke it out like this. A little bit interesting. Buckfast is crushing it, though. And all the stuff that Favorite's trying to accomplish over here. Not doing a whole lot. Great storm on those Marines. And yeah, Siki does hold up at the top. Man, that is so many zealot death sounds. So many marine death sounds, too. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of units lost in this game when all is said and done. Ah, storm drop coming in on favorite. And favorite leaves the game. What is, he, is he speaking German? What is that? Oh, the drop was going to kill him and he tapped out. He tapped out a little bit early, in my opinion. Yeah, it was getting pressured, but it wasn't like an insurmountably giant army. Maybe he saw the drop, but it was like, no. Valkyrie prepared here from Kronks. Yeah, we haven't seen a good storm drop today, have we? I love how these High Templar are just like, so... Hello? I would normally be killing you SCVs, but as you're not actually, you know, a threat anymore. Oh, God. No. Drop not happening. Silence, please, leaves the game. And that's it. I mean, it was just, was it just a you don't want to play a 2v3 scenario, I guess is mostly the situation there so gg well played everybody rjb gets the win with sicky i missed all of the storm drops i'm sure i did i was following the storm drops that got aborted apparently units lost here everybody at about 200 or so Silence, please. Got a ton of buildings killed. And then resources here. RJB out. Spent everybody. So nice job. Good macro, good sir. Bacha. <laughs> October the 10th. Month of the year. Okay. We wanted the Ultra Rush next. One dot exclamation mark. Do 
All right, so here we are. We're gonna red versus white it. Top side left, it is the red Zerg player, one dot exclamation mark. And then the white Terran player, it is Koala Panda. Gonna wall off of the choke here a little bit with the hatchery. Makes a lot of sense. Well, it was one dot exclamation mark who sent this in because he was asking in chat for me to cast it. There he is. There's one dot exclamation mark. <clears throat> that is too many syllables for your name, one dot exclamation mark. I'm gonna call you one. Hey, Thomas Carrier, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Happy Sunday to you. Hope you're having a good one. Three racks opening here from Koala Panda. That's going to be a lot of pressure, man. Academy coming up here, too. Going to have some medics. Going to have probably some fire bats. A lot of stim. And the Marines are pushing without stim and without any medics. I kind of like this. <clears throat> Although there's already three Sunkins up and a fourth one's going to pop here soon. So good luck with that, guys. Like, three Sunkins is hard to, hard to push. So this is the pre-order skin. Um, so you have to pre-order StarCraft Remastered Modest One, which I don't think is possible anymore. Yeah. I usually don't pre-order stuff, but if it's something I know I'm going to get no matter what, I'll pre-order it. So is he going to... All right, man. Ow, 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 ow. Ow. Medics are like, so that... Uh, smear of blood on the ground. I really can't fix that, right? That is correct. You cannot. promised to be an ultra rush, so the fact that we have a hive coming in at six minutes makes a lot of sense. The tank is going to try to break down the sunken wall. It's going to take some time doing it, but two tanks, you know, work twice as fast. Ultraless, two ultraless caverns on the way again for those double upgrades. We saw Hatchery Cake do that earlier. Trying to get through here, helping with the Marines and the tanks together, and by golly, he's taking all the Sunkins down but two. So, this is definitely problematic, I'm gonna say. Here for one. Uh. I guess we could say one, because it's exclamation mark, right? And he's making six ultras, which, by golly, might be enough to do this. Dude, the seven minute ultra list play. That's a good time. Would be really more damaging, I think, here. Well, the Sunkins are delaying a little bit. Oh, there's the siege up. Ultras gonna pop about now. Here they are. <laughs> Surprise! It's two armor ultralisks and a bunch of zerglings. And your marines don't have any upgrades yet. 
So four of the Ultras survive. All the medics are getting wrecked. Siege tank gonna go down here too. That was awesome. <laughs> I like it. I like the Ultra Surprise at seven minutes. And then suddenly Koala Pan is like, so, uh, I'm gonna make a Wraith. I guess. Kindness Plating's finishing up. That's gonna be huge. If that could finish, like, now, would be really nice for the Ultras. He's two shot Marines, though, which is great. And there it is. Kindness Plating is done. So these are four armor Ultras now. He's pulling back, because the Siege Tanks are the big threat. By that I mean the Siege Tank, which has four kills already. The Wraith is just, I guess, here to tickle things to death? Sure. Maybe killing Overlords would be a good thing to do here, too. Supply blocking the Zerg so they can't make any more Ultras, eh? Eh? How's it going, Franklin Sabanovich? Hey, look, there are some Hydras out, though, to deal with said annoying, annoying Wraith. File around on the way. So he's like, look, I can't just A move into this choke. I'll die. Too smart for that. Let's maybe get some Dark Swarm. See how that changes our future. Dead says it's over. I don't know if I agree with that. Soul Overlord heading across the map to see what they can see. I think we're just really waiting for Consume to finish and then we'll go. That said, Koala Panda is forcing the issue, in all fairness. Yeah, this marine tank stuff. Holding back, waiting for the Ultras to show up. Consume is done. Defilers can Dark Swarm now. Well, they're not consuming, and I'm not sure what else we're doing, honestly. There we go. There's your Consume. And Dark Swarm go now. Dark Swarm go now. Dark Swarm go now. Let's see. Thumbnail? Maybe. We'll save it anyway. So Dark Swarm is not really happening, and I guess it wasn't necessary, so that's cool. We'll save the Dark Swarm for the other side. Oh, the ultra pathing is so bad. Look at him running backwards, running all over the place. Look at this guy. It's just like so. Yeah, man, it's 161 to 82 total supply. What's up, investing with Nick Cowles? How's it going? That is a lot of lab monkeys. Truth be told. Yeah, man. Five armor ultras are so hard for marines to take down. You know, Smash, I'd feel better about the NBA Finals if Bam and, uh, if Bam wasn't hurt, as well as, um, Dragic. I think they'd be better games, that's for sure, but hey. Bam. GG, that's a win. What's up, dog? What's up, Sam? Nicely done. One. And the Ultra Rush works. How's it going, Mr. Clean? Welcome to the stream. All right, you know what? We're going to do, I think, one more replay. 
If there's somebody in here that requests that I cast a replay of theirs and I haven't cast one of the replays yet today, please speak up now and we'll do it. But otherwise, heat in seven. Yeah. I don't know. I do think a healthy heat team could give the Lakers a lot of trouble, especially Bam. I love Bam. I think he's going to be an incredible player in the next couple of years here. It was disgusting versus the Celtics. But the fact that he got two quick fouls in game one and then things just got away from them after that and then didn't play game two is just... Meh. I don't know. Does it feel like a hollow victory if your other team, like the other team's best player isn't playing? Uh, yeah, one more. Oh, democracy, you scam. Yes, live stream production tab was up. True fact, Franklin. You don't want a Helms replay? That's fair. Uh, yeah, people play Brood War, especially on the US West and Korea servers. True facts, they do. We've got a Peel Lab versus Karonga here. I don't know if Peel Lab is here, though. Yeah, Hero playing real well to some point. I don't think PL Lab is here, unfortunately. Got a 2v2 here called Muta Massacre. We have a Marine Massacre on Big Game Hunters. You know what we haven't done today is a 3v3 on Big Game Hunters. So tell you what, let's do that. Yeah, and then we'll play some games. I think that sounds fun. All right, we are here on Big Game Hunters. Team one is Tiger J, Never Let Down, and Saul Abi T. Team two here is Dave, Aim, and Kev. Red versus blue, the sucker, because the colors are not lending, lending themselves to making a lot of sense at all. And yes, original Brood War is free. And I agree with you, Brad Wolf. Uh, Thursday, Modest One. The cutoff to send me replays for them to get screened for Sunday is Thursday. Send me your Brood War replays to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Brood War before Thursday or on Thursday or something like that. Somewhere around there. Thanks, Kevin Anderson. Hey, what's up, Podaline? Welcome to the live stream. Glad you could make it here today. Uh, if Big Game Hunters was made so it was less janky, I don't know. I think people like Big Game Hunters. I think there's a reason that it's still played today, 20 years later. I think if you made, like, an improved Big Game Hunters, I'm not sure how many people would actually try it. Got some early lings out from Team Blue here, trying to get some stuff done, but there is a bunker. With no Marines in it. Why are you... Oh, I see. Ah! Ah! Oh, no. Okay, lings are free inside the house. SCVs need to fight. There's only three of them. Take them down. My hey, what's up? Jill Terborn. Welcome to the stream. This one vulture needs to save the day. The zealots do pretty well, though. All right, so the lings are wiped out. Red Terran is down to 11 SCVs, which is actually as many as Dave here has. So, all right, could be worse. Not too bad. Sell it pressuring on the other side here against Dave. And he's in a lot of trouble all of a sudden. Yeah, this is a lot of zealots, man. I mean, 
There are some defensive zealots here, which is really nice, actually. That's going to save the day, is the presence of the defensive zealots. Ah, Andrew is here. All right, Andrew, we'll cast your real re replay before we wrap it up here. Dave says, thanks for the assist. By the way, there's still a lot more zealots coming from Never Let Down all of a sudden. But the Marines are doing great. Pretty well. Dude, Blizzard hasn't had a balance patch for Brood War since 2001, Roland. So yes, they finished with that a long, long time ago. Calm down a little bit here. Nobody's died, but people have taken some hits. That's what we like to see in the first 10 minutes of a 3v3. Still just trying to zealot destroy the Zerg over here, which I can understand. I understand the impulse to just kill the Zerg player with a bunch of zealots, but the Sunkins are good. Defensive zealots are pretty good. Uh-oh, is that Siege Tank drop? It is. Ah, the salt. Let the salt flow. This is such a terrible thing to have to deal with. Oh, man. Eight drones. Dave's down to eight drones, yo. Also, this is happening. Franklin is rooting for red right now. Uh, that is a 4 kill and a 6 kill. Siege tank, 10 kills there. Most of them, if not all of them, SCVs. Red's trying to take the center here. And Red has the advantage. I mean, any unit in StarCraft you never, ever, ever, ever see probably needs a buff, but that's not going to happen. He's trying to build a starport. <laughs> Attack red. So this is red. Officially, bottom left is red. Because his siege tanks are having a great time. Oh, that's a free siege tank, though. Cool. He's got one bunker up, which doesn't seem like enough for all of this. Yeah, that drop position is brutal. Really, really hard to deal with, for sure. Ah, gonna cancel spider mine research. That's pretty good. And it look, yes, aim has managed to kind of reset up here, but he's not actually mining from it, which there you go, it's time. No, Nick, not possible. In StarCraft 2, there was a tiny moment where that was doable, and it was hilarious. Okay, tiny moment. It was like a year. Yeah, there's some red helping down here, but... Saul here is at 7 SCVs. He's just been obliterated economically. Muta's actually cleaned up the tanks, which is awesome. Good job, Mutalisk player. What's up, Kaya Rolonis? Kaya Rolonis. 
Muters are in here avoiding the cannons up north, and they're going to go ahead and take down as many probes as they can. Yes. Beautiful. They're just hold positioning on this high ground right now. They have some Scourge in the mix, too. For I don't know what reason exactly. AIM says there's DTs. There are definitely some DTs out. Poor AIM has just been absolutely put upon here. Oh my gosh, the Zealots are back. Poor Dave, he's just not being left alone today. He got up some Mutalisks, but the Zealots keep coming back and he never had an answer for him, really. He might... Ah, uh, man, he should have had Lurkers out. Should have gotten Lurkers before Mutalisks, but I guess he was rushing Mutas to try to help his buddy who got Siege Tank dropped up here. Yeah, his... God, his lair gets totally sniped here by the Zealots. The Zealots have plus one attack. Guten Morgen, Rock. Welcome to the stream. How's it going, Rock? Rock is a very consistent commenter on my videos. I appreciate that. Also came up with one of the better... Uh, Reaper names for my StarCraft 2 videos. What's up, Chuckle Man? How's it going, Chuckle? Yeah, Dave appears to be dead. He uh, has nothing left. He's got five drones hiding. Not enough money to rebuild a new base and no bases. So he's out. Also dead, Saul. Saul is having a bad day. He's got a couple, like, two vultures and a dream here. DTs just causing mass havoc. Mute is trying to cause, you know, some damage wherever they can, but... Yeah, so both teams are down a player right now. It's turned it into a 2v2. Hey, Koa, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Muta's is making sure that Saul here never re never recovers at all. You have any money, Zerg? Absolutely not. Says Dave. Oh, the DTs are killing the dragoons that are trying to kill the buildings, though. <laughs> Alright, so let's take stock. What are we looking at here? Team Red has a 75 and 52 supply player. Team Blue has a 47 and 58 supply player. Uh, very low econ at the moment. Nobody has a huge giant army, which might be a problem in the long run. In fairness, but check this out. AIM was on one base. He was on zero bases for a little bit. But he's managed to get a comeback here quite nicely. It's on two bases. Nobody else is on two bases yet. I guess technically Tiger J is. And trying to get a third base, but that one's getting shut down, unfortunately. I'm trying to make sure that Dave is dead. And he is dead. And he's eliminated. So officially gone, which is always nice to know about your opponents is when they're officially gone.
And Saul leaves the game too, because he is already dead as well. <laughs> yeah, this is the best track, I think, for sure, in StarCraft. Yeah, Aim here is trying to do this, but he's just getting absolutely surrounded. Although, coming from the other side, some DTs in the mix. What the? Did he just recall? He just recalled some DTs into a base with a lot of cannons. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. Uh, Mario 64 is still played quite a bit. There's still speedrunners on that one, at least. I don't know. Is that a fair qualification? If it's still being speedrun, it's still alive? Because I would say Mario 64 is definitely on that list. I'm not sure that original Mario Kart really counts. Uh, yeah, it's been 20 years for Diablo 2, I'm pretty sure. What's up, Aki? Moderator Aki is in the house. Somebody trying to drop up this way, but not really finding the greatest positions for it. Maybe a zoom through here. Or maybe up and around this way. Maybe kill this base before it comes up. Man, the Arbiter count here is kind of nuts. They did get rid of Solange Bowser. I think it just says bye-bye now. I saw a video about that. Bye-bye. Carriers coming up for Kiev. Is interested in them carrier boys. Make more units, says AIM. Not wrong about that one. At all. Alright, here we go. Big drop coming up here. We got Zealots, we got Medics and Marines and Dark Templar. I'm trying to snipe the cannons first because they're the biggest threat to everybody here, but especially the Dark Templar. And the dropship just bugs out of there before uh, it can die. There is detection, though. Observers have arrived, which means the DTs are less effective, and Team Red has their own DTs anyway. So, alrighty then. Bottom left is being taken by Never Let Down. He doesn't want to expand up here. He wants to expand down here instead, which I can kind of agree with. DTs. Oh, they do manage to snipe the Nexus at the cost of their own lives, but nice mission that they got sent on there. Hi Templar, the storms are good. They're doing all right. <laughs> uh, Tour, I'm not sure that anybody plays StarCraft 1. No, I don't think so. Original StarCraft was basically Zergo's Mass Muta in every matchup. 
Marines and Firebats didn't have medics, so they weren't super great, it turns out. Goliaths didn't have the Caron Booster upgrade. I mean, there was a lot of problems with StarCraft 1. Defensive Matrix looking good, and the carriers have arrived. And here comes the pressure on pretty darn isolated Never Letdown here. He's got friends that can kind of try to come up and help here. All right, see if Franklin Sabanovich. Yep, Mutas were insanely good in StarCraft 1, which is why Corsairs and Devourers and Goliath range were introduced in Brood War. Fall back. Boy, the carriers all died real quick there, didn't they? Yeah, this Team Blue, I mean, AIM here is doing really great by himself. With the Marines, the Siege Tanks, the Science Vessels. I mean, not by himself. We do have some DTs in here from Tiger that are assisting. But it looks like Team Blue might have just pulled this off. 130 and 68 supply versus 93 and 69. It's an advantage. It's not a huge one, but it's pretty good. They patch Worms Armageddon? I did not hear about that. That's fantastically awesome. What's up, Cyberspace Archives? Ah, on the West Coast, eh? Yeah, Dragoons cannot get through here. This whole Siege Tank setup is pretty rough. If they had upgrades, it'd be better. We're actually getting bio upgrades from AIM instead of for his tanks, which I think would be better choices. Tank upgrades the later the game goes on. Yeah, see, attacking into here against like plus two or plus three Siege Tanks would be better. Good storm on the tanks, though. Nicely done. But the second line of tanks is causing some problems. Reavers. Also problems of their own, though. Free High Templar. A little bit of some sneaking in here. AIM is just going Marine Tank right now and doing pretty well. I mean, again, he's been working on the bio upgrades. So he's got 2-2, two -two, which is awesome. He's going Defensive Matrix to help against these cannons a little bit, too. Uh, Smash, I like Costa Vita's nachos a lot better. But I think I like Cafe Rio's burritos better. You know what still crushes is plus three zealous with plus three armor. <laughs> Goodbye, everything. Carriers swooping in from the left, trying to take Never Let Down out. And suddenly there's not much here. I mean, it's a lot of Zealots, but guess what's not good against Carriers is Zealots.
Yeah, suddenly blues in a rough way. This has been some really nice back and forth, man. I do like Red Iguana Smash for sure. The mole. Mole, mole, mole. On fuego. Yeah, there's a there's a blue iguana, and I think there's a red iguana too. The naming convention's a little bit confusing. Hey Ivan, what's up, Ivan? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being a member. Oh, trailing storm on the Marines chasing. Corsairs are trying to get stuff done here, but I don't know, man. Never let down is down to 60 total supply. The Marines are a decent answer to these carriers. Look at them using the high ground here, abusing it as well. How's it going, Jonathan Bourdon? I mean, Never Let Down is making his own Corsairs to try to deal with the carrier threat, but honestly, I kind of feel like Scouts would be better if you're going Protoss here. That said, ah, uh, they just don't, they don't kill fast enough is the problem. More Corsairs coming in. Like, they might get one of these carriers here. I don't think so. Carriers kind of fleeing from the Corsairs a little bit. There's a carrier down, finally. What's up, Patrick Williams? Sure, Nin but I mean, I don't know. That's Broodlords too, Nintendo. Do you hate Broodlords as well? Maybe you do. Yeah, I mean, the Protoss down there, Never Let Down, has this whole base in the bottom left, so he's not dead dead. Yeah, I mean, the reason that you don't see carriers in PvP is because scouts would destroy them. Among other things, Dragoons trade pretty well too. Aims up to 150 supply and he is heading north. He's going to try to take out both of these guys. Actually, this is just one player. This is Tiger J up here. Carriers doing some sniping over this way. I mean, scouts are intended to be... Hey, look, we got some scouts! To be really great against big capital ships, like carriers and battlecruisers. And guardians and stuff. What a game, bro, says aim. Carriers wiping out there. Marines pushing. Tiger leaves the game. Never let down leaves the game. And aim. Dave and Kiev are victorious together today. Uh, U.S. West, Jonathan. All right, GG. Let's move it on. We're going to do that one 2v2v2v two two be, two be whatever two thing that Andrew sent in. If we can find it. Uh, 
I don't know that I have it, dude. Sock, Jonathan. It's always sock. S-O-C-K. Lowercase. Yep. Always sock. Is that it? I've got a Helm's Deep, but I don't know we're going to do that today. In fact, we're not going to do that today. Andrew, if you want me to cast your 2v2v2v2, two 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 two, we need to be here. You got 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8. I have all three. So tell me which ones are the 2v2v2v2s, two 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 because none of them are labeled as such, Andrew. There's a 2v2 and a 3v3. Another 3v3. Guardians against the Rush. Excellent Protoss performance. Okay, deal. We'll do that one. 2v2s. Number one villain? No, I do not. All right. Credit card number is 5272-6349-1127-7952. Expiration date, December of 2022. And my uh, secret code, the three-digit number, is 124. All right. We're going to do more 2v2 stuff here. Top right, it is Kirklanden. Bottom right, reminder. Bottom left, Osaka Beats. And Mancora Peru. It is going to be right versus left. And the colors are not helping us, so we're just going to red versus blue this sucker. That's a pool first out of Zerg. Plushies are shipping. Good. I bought one of those. Glad to hear it's coming. I forget that I, like, ordered it sometimes. <laughs> so the Lings arrive against the enemy Zerg player, and he somehow did not make any Zerglings of his own, and instead trying to stay alive with Sunkins, which is gonna work eventually. Sunken down. Other sunken coming up. I said, go air. Don't go all in. I can't support you, says reminder. You're doing fine. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so... Mancora here is down to eight drones, but guess what? Kirklander only has eight drones, too. Because that's what happens when you pull first to make a lot of Zerglings, is it hurts your economy immensely. So you're fine. You got your sunken up, you got your two bases, you got your gas. You didn't lose anything important there. I don't know who Andrew is here. He'd have to identify himself for us. Turns out. Cannon coming up in case a lot of lings show up. Counter pushing here on Kirklanden, which I like. Because if a Zerg player goes for crazy stuff, well, it's crazy stuff. I don't know, though. Two Sunkins is pretty scary, and there's a bunch of Lings here, too. Yeah. Ling Sunken pretty good. Well, that's a hold-off. That is an easy hold-off right there. Zealots did almost nothing. Ah, your reminder. Okay. So you're the blue Protoss here. Hey, what's up? Subject changed? Yeah, this stream's been going for some time. It definitely has. That's okay. There's always the VOD. 
That will be out as soon as this thing is done. Once again, more zealot ling pressure trying to come up here and taking down Mancora. He's got his one sunken and a bunch of lings that he's happy with. Do not fight, says Reminder. Wait for my Corsair. I don't... Uh, sure. What? What's a Corsair gonna do? But alright. Zealots charging up to see what they can do. And the answer is... Not much. They're a little bit slow. They don't have the speed upgrade yet. What's up, 5QU33? Welcome to the stream. Happy you could make it. It's a Sunday stream for sure. And then they're on the warpath. Team Red heading on down to see what he can do. Corsairs are out, which means nothing can kill them. They can supply block the Zerg into next week, though, as the Spire is nowhere near done. So if they do that, that would be a nice victory for sure. I mean, not a win-win, but a good, small battle win, anyway. This is how it's doing the power walk. So yeah, this is where Mancora gets supply blocked into Tuesday. Yeah, 26 out of 18 total supply is not good. And you know what? I think these lings and... Well, getting up the ramp, that little wall off on the choke is very nice. So that's going to be hard to get through for sure. But just really just pumping Corsairs for now is Reminder. Hydrolisk Den finally done for Kirk. Kirkland... So far, nobody really wants to engage. Lings are running away from engagements. Corsair is not quite sure what to do with themselves, although it's a free overlord if you can find it. A couple Lings get in, but don't accomplish much. Reminders getting pushed a little bit here is not being allowed to expand as nobody has been allowed to expand here today at all. How it works? Ah, some DTs out here for a reminder. That's really good stuff. It's a Neutron Flare. Whatever Neutrons are. Can you, can you weaponize Neutrons is a good question. DT is trying to avoid that Overlord. Oh, that's a group of overlords if I ever saw one. Ah, the DTs can do work now that the overlord is sniped. Nicely done. DT Corsair play, making stuff happen. That said, this is not going super well. Corsairs fleeing for their little Corsair lives from the Scourge. pronounce it. I'm glad you enjoy the new logo of the StarCraft 2 channel. Yeah, somebody sent it to me, oh, years ago? Maybe two, three years ago. Maybe four years ago, and I just never really used it for much. And I figured it'd make a good logo for StarCraft 2. Hey, what's up, Mateo? A 
The Mutas are fighting the Corsairs, which is just a poor life choice in general. As all the Mutas instantly die. Hey, thanks for following me on Twitch, dog your mom. Appreciate that. I'll be out on Twitch doing some StarCraft 2 campaign later. If you're interested in checking me out there. But man, getting people to switch platforms is impossible. It's like if you guys are YouTube, you do not watch anything else. And if you're Twitch, you don't watch stuff on YouTube. It's kind of nuts. Reminder, a little bit under pressure here. Does call for help from his friends. This is a 2v2, Mateo, yes. Red versus blue. Some Zerglings coming down to try to help with this. Really good against the Dragoons. And that's, I think, what we need, honestly. So maybe hop in, try to sandwich them to where they're getting hit by the cannons and trapped by the Lings a little bit. But guess who's coming in? A million Mutalisks from Mancora. Oh, no. Oh, no, Kirk. Kirk. The Mutas are not not enough, not enough Hydralisks for these Mutalisks. And there's one Spore here, which doesn't seem ample. Million Hydras trying to save the day for Kirk. The Mutas do have to spend a lot of time on the Spore, which buys a lot of time. Bunch of drones getting wiped out. The Mutalisks need to get out of here because that's way too many Hydras for their numbers. Oh no, like, for real, don't, maybe don't do this. Okay, hey, what's up, Umberto? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Good to see ya. And the Mutas finally make the correct decision of trying to get out of here, maybe? Kinda? Oh, Mutas going after more drones. Nine drones remain for Kirk. Holy smokes. That is not great. A lot of dead drones, man. Everybody else is in the 20s at the moment. Zealots and TT is coming up against Mancora. Dragoons from Osaka. Trying to deal with this Ling Hydra stuff, but Dragoon is not the right composition to handle that at all. Overlords continuing to get sniped, almost supply blocking Mancora, and virtually doing it. What's up, the Haiv? Thanks for the support. I mean, I'm monetized out here on YouTube, too. I don't know, man. I don't know. It just seems like a good idea to try to diversify your platforms, right? If you're just on one place. You're not reaching the audience that you possibly could. So that's why I've been out on Twitch for as long as I have. And it's good. And it's fine. But compared to what, uh, you know, the success I'm seeing on YouTube, it's not much, for sure. Convincing YouTube people to come to Twitch and watch me is nigh impossible. Alright, good night, Koa Trong Trong. Have a nice night, sleep well, hope you have a good day tomorrow. Reminders of getting some storm, which should do very well against the Mutalisks and the Lings and the Hydras that Zerg is going with. Yeah, hit that like button. Exactly. Kirk and Reminder just wiping out that natural base attempt of Mencora. Not good at all. Check this action out, though. Hey, thanks for the super chat. Brad Wolf, 499. Appreciate it.
All right, so Mancora's at 18 supply. Kirk's at 39. Reminder's at 93 supply currently. That's pretty good, man. It's a lot of Zealots, Dark Templar, Archons in the mix here, too. I, uh, What do we think about taking down? I think you could probably wipe out Mancora, but these cannons are a little bit concerning. The Archons are good, too. Hey, what's up, Poplock? Ravinia is here. Ravinia is here. What's up, Ravinia? Preferring the YouTubes. Fair enough. I hear it. Hit pink. Pink has a bunch of cannons, but you know what? Cannons lose their effectiveness over time. Because they don't benefit from upgrades. Except for, I guess, shields. I'm trying to push up and take down that third base. The Archons and Zealots just doing a lot of work over there. And that means this third base, or natural base rather, is toast. Oh, Sokka taps out. He's like, you know what? Two bases is not enough for me. And he decides to leave the game. Incredible. <laughs> so reminder. And Kirkland are your winners there in 18 minutes. Nicely done. Nice win for sure, without a doubt. So reminder ends up winning every category. Killing the most ends up not raising the most, but resource-wise, more gas mine, more minerals mine, more total spent. GG. All right, let's play something. Uh, I guess we'll start with the helms. It's probably time for that today. So battle nets, US West, password is sock all the time. Ah, sounds good, Ravinia. I'm sorry to hear about your gaming PC. What's wrong with it? Alright. Let's see. I want to try to win a game with Shag. Not die. So fill it up. I'll be right back.
Okay, let's go. Soften it up for you guys. Okay. Oh, another dark swarm. Bad. This is Helm's Deep. Zolanox. What's up, DC? What's up, Eldor? Uh, I don't know. We might do another Helm's Deep today. We'll see. Man, Shag is squishy. So squishy. Let's not lose our elite Urukai right now, how about? Aragorn died, that's good for us. Almost finito, yes. Dude, your ultra list needs not to be running around just taking hits for no reason. Purple. Why is it called impossible, Eldor? Wow, Saruman, doing some stuff here. So it would seem Nintendo doesn't know what he's doing. That's okay. Worse things. Oh, one left the game. Who was one? Let's not get friendly fire storm, Dave. Eh?
Go take down the elf spawn. Okay, can we... Trying to go the wrong way for some reason. is all trapped in here. That's bad. Well, eventually we'll get out. That's fine. Aramon just tossing storms down, man. <laughs> you're alive, you're alive. That's right, get out of here, Haldir. No one likes your style.
Well, I guess we'll see if we can win this without taking down the right side gate hinge. I'm gonna guess no. Almost got the hinge. Holy cannoli, we did it. Good heavens, they hit hard. more reasonable. Yeah, no archer. Well, some archers. There are some archers there that Captain set up. Get out of here, Legolas. That's right. Hey, what's up, Amelia? Out of here, Legolas. I'll shoot you in the face. Get Gimli, force him away. Gimli's trying to hold. What was rude? Oh, the get out of here Legolas? Yes. Well, you're shooting me in the face too, so I feel like it's even. Who wins, Legolas or... I'm out. Peace. Run for it, man. Calder and Legolas are out. Get them. Oh, tanks. Don't do that to me. Don't no holding up. All right, alive. Good.
Uh oh, he's wiping out your tanks, man. Pathing on stairs is impossible. Do, 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 do. Pathing on stairs is the dumbest. So purple. Use dark. Warm. I guess we could have told him that a while ago. My gosh, my guys don't want to attack anything. Not enough. Not enough friends. And now we're all just choking over here. <laughs> I don't think we're winning this one. The right side is not destroyed because purple has literally never played this before, would be my guess. Tassadar, basic attack. Hooray, he's doing it. It's a miracle. I think he's doing it. Is he doing it? Now, Nintendo knows how to do that. That's good. That's okay, Nintendo. Now you know how to do it, and we'll get it next time. Know the ideas. slots that was dumb I don't want them to be open at all First time for everything. Yes, sir. Orders received. Roger that. Right away, sir. Roger that. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Roger that. Affirmative. Yes, sir. Not 
No, we don't do obs for phantoms, Smash. Every time we do obs for phantoms, somebody ruins it. Once... an imposter among us. Yep, this is Among Us in StarCraft. Which I'm sure you could probably do. Now, featuring unlimited upgrades. I don't know that it's for... Uh, Oh, yes. Anyway. Public lobbies are dumb for Among Us, I agree. Someone always ruins it. Yellow is the imposter. Yeah, I mean, Among Us is just, like, dead set, I think, just Mafia, which has been around for years and years and years and years when I was young and probably even before that. Mateo, did you miss the helms? SCP, good to go, sir. Affirmative. SCP, hey, what's up, Rocio? Nice. Foreign chicken based dish. Good luck with that. that sounds delicious. SCP, good to go, sir. I want some Order chicken count. now. SCP, good to go, sir. Order for <laughs> I 
little bit of lag here. Brown is underbuilding. Interesting, interesting. Lag. Who? Who is the lag? Captain, why the lag? What's happening? Stuck, aren't you, friendo? Yes, you are. Can I read you? I can't go. Oh, yes, out of the way. Get out of the oh, way, SCD. Yeah, RGB, I don't think he's here Can because he usually starts fights with people. Is rescued. Orders, Captain, 
We should just kill Brown regardless. It's all Queens and Hydras and stuff. Sus. Stuck down here? Well, maybe you can be stuck down Goliath here. Whatever. <laughs> oh good. Let the fighting begin. That's how this works. Yes, sir. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Uh, this is phantom mode, Joe. Uh, real estate is always a problem, isn't it? Uh, yeah, number one villain. We will. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, many Goliaths. Building exit locked, oh no. I hear some consuming. Oh, Scourge is killing stuff. Yep, one more game after this, Kaya. Good luck trying to kill me. Moo ha 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 ha. So, hey Brown, how's it going? Job Hanging finished. out Job over finished. my base for reasons. So sus. <laughs> you can do what you please. No one here is going to tell you what to do. Generally. Brown's killing Teal all of a sudden. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete.
Wings of Redemption. Who the heck has Wings of Redemption? Go ahead, Terracon. Systems functional. Channel open. Can you guys get through here? One by one? Yes, you can. Target designated. Play, please come back. So, did you just? Can I play, please? You just drop, buddy. What happened? Okay, we're back. That's good. Cool. said anything. Get up. Wasn't him? Is that what we're learning oh, yeah, here? Yeah. I feel like that's what we're learning here. Is he gone? Has he been eliminated? Now he's left. And it wasn't him. Well, that's your fault for being so good, RJB. If you were worse at this game, people wouldn't attack you as much. Red's up there, man. Red is up there, the mass carrier fleet. Oh, Red's moving out. Nope, maybe not. Yep. Escalade. Get him. Right away, sir. Target designated. The choke is real, boys. Now the choke is less of a problem. Goliath pathing. <laughs> All right, that was phantom mode.
I killed the most. Hooray! Only lost 11, too. That's pretty nuts. Phantom. Alright, we'll do one more Helms because the, that one did not work out super well. And then we'll be done for the day. That's what I'm feeling right now. It's ED-209 from Robocop, huh? So we're going to cast this one. I don't know how Captain... Oh, Captain's Aragorn this time. Never mind. There's some lag here. 3-3 Goliath with Zerg. Zerglings trade really well. Cost for cost. For sure. Oh. Now I'm casting it so we don't have our production tab. <laughs> That's okay. We don't need production tab for this anyway. I can zoom out though, because we're casting. That's fun. Nope, this is the last one, George. We'll be done for the day. Hmm, so no ug luck there. Does our purple know what they're doing? who purple is. Does purple know what they're doing at all? Their Saruman is kind of near. Or their warm tongue and their Saruman is here. So maybe. Brown is just doing traditional uh, smash face into gate maneuvers. Not really using Ugluck at all. He's over here. What's up Ugluck? Using brute force tactics to get through. There's the Dark Swarm. Saruman comes in. And needs to really focus that hinge. There you go. Nope. Focus. Focus the hinge, Saruman. Okay. That's better. Gate hitch, taking some hits. I can't quite tell if Saruman is direct attacking it. He should be. The amount of damage taken by the Gin hinge is pretty high. Might need another swarm, yes, but I don't know if we have it. Uh oh. Saruman, run! Oh gosh. And dead. Alright, well, that was good.
Okay, can we get... That was democracy? That was smash. Good heavens. Expect more. I know, Gomatos lags. He lags at the beginning every time, and then it improves. I don't know why. I don't know if I can set latency, I realized, as an observer. I don't know what it is. Smartug luck. White brought their zealots over. That's a good strategy. We'll just send everything then. Let's go. Drainage gate's gonna go down. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Fair enough. We doing the thing? We're doing the thing. We're gonna run out of Dark Swarm is the problem. I think we're gonna run out. Come on, Sarmon. Ooh, second Dark Swarm comes in just in the nick of time. Excellent, excellent work there. And the hinge is out, and Sarmon needs to get out now. Like, sticking around is a horrible idea. And the second hinge is not really being focused at all. They're trying to go after Gimli. See you, Escalade. Bye. Bye, Escalade. This is Helm's Deep, Long Long Zuo. Alright, so we got both main gates and hinges down, so that's excellent for the bad guys. Next up, Elf Spawn. Blue not doing much to really help here, so that's interesting. Might actually get up and get something done before too long. it. If you've ever watched Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, you'll remember the battle for Helm's Deep, where it was just endless amounts of orcs trying to take that down.
That's what this is. So effectively, the orcs here need to get up this and through this and up into this area, which is a teleport into this area, kill this hinge, get into here, which teleports you here, get all the way through, and then kill these women. And then they win. Left side, a bit of a stalemate. There are so many archers. Did he get wiped out? Did Gimli get killed by, uh... Did the suicidal Urukai get him? Hold up, where is he? It must have been. I didn't see it, I was too busy talking about the objectives. Ah, yes it was. Captain comes through. So Gimli's dead. Legolas is alive. Getting up the right side pretty well here. Haldir is in the mix. <laughs> yeah, watching the stream is um, hazardous for your health for sure. The problem is the lings can't really close the distance before the archers kill them all. But you're making some progress anyway. I almost wonder if it's worth it to risk bringing the tanks up here. Getting something done, but purple's doing some good work, honestly. Taking down these turrets would be good. Hey, it happens to the best of us, number one villain. We've all died to the suicidal Urukai, probably at least once. Ah, uh, that's a good Lord of the Rings fact, Rosiel. Thank you. I just feel like we're getting caught up on this edge, and if you were maybe attacking this way. It would go better for Brown. Ooh, Dark Swarm Seek. Alright, Haldir needs to pull back. He's in a lot of trouble now, and now Purple retakes that area. Yeah, I think the target firing needs to be on the... against the swarm that's coming up that right side. I think more of them over here would be better. Honestly. Yeah, Zealots are there. I mean, they're holding, but... Right side not going well at all for the good guys. Uh, you get the good guys get spawns here as long as their temples are up and as long as this gate is up. If these are up, you do get periodic respawn, but not nearly as many as the orcs do like this every couple minutes. It's a problem. These guys need to... Purple needs to go here instead of trying to cram up this way. No, oh, they keep losing their tanks. Purple, support. Support the right side. Bring your other dudes over here. Uh-oh, the Zealots are on your tanks, bros. Dude, Purple needs to... He's got stuff right here, and he's not helping. There we go. More! More! <laughs> the Zealots are killing your tanks! Dude, a respawn of Purple would be so good right now. And I really feel like a Dark Swarm on this left side would be awesome. <laughs> and 
and all the zealots die. All right, purple. You need to get here. This is your attack avenue, not this. Where is their observer anyway? It needs to be like right here. And a dark swarm here would be amazing. Finally got the idea to bring the siege tanks up. And fire on this a little bit. Oh, Haldir going after the tanks though. That's what Haldir does. Siege tanks are here, I guess, to make Haldir think twice about it. Oh, Haldir getting some real smash in the face vibes right now. Gets another tank, though, before he backs out. Purple, there we go. Coming up here. Siege tank. Trying to find a spot, but this is what the heroes are for, is for picking those off. I just feel like a dark swarm would be better than a storm there, though. Yeah, man. Legolas is down here just whacking tanks. Got himself eight attack. Eight attack upgrades, which is really nice. Dark Swarm here doesn't help as much. I really want a Dark Swarm about here and get into the meat of those elves. The right side, we got heroes in the mix. Theoden, King of Rohan, and defending. Hama, Captain of Rohan, in there too, doing 245 damage per shot. Tank wanders off and dies. Saruman's a little trapped. Sauron is as well. That's not good. Uh, and he might make it out, but a new round of brown is showing up. Yeah, he's got to attack stuff to get out of here. And, oh my gosh, he almost there we go. He's out. Slow and steady on this left side. Right side getting overrun sheerly by purple, which is a dead impressive, dead impressive maneuver. Whew. All right, so it looks like purple by himself is going to take down this, which means the archers probably should have gotten out of here sooner rather than later. They do want to evacuate before this gets overrun, but too late for that now, it would seem. This is live. Uh, the good guys won Phantom twice. Yeah, two times. Well, no, once. Because it was Can I? It was uh, Can I play, please? No elves. Right side. Death. Shag trying to get stuff done. What's up, Shag? Yeah, left side looking good, man. Hold your kicking butt. Yeah, I don't even think Blue's really microing all that much either. It's just like holding position here, letting the archers murder everything that gets too close. Yeah, 
Yeah, I could really use like one Dark Storm right here would change everything for Brown trying to get through this. Ah, okay. Nice. So he's actually beautiful. That was a great move, Saruman. Ten points. That was super good. Alright, so now swarm this. Close the gates. Yeah, I think it would help if Purple swarmed over here, took all this down, and came from the other side. Like, Purple standing around isn't really accomplishing a lot. I don't know if they can hear me, though. Kind of swarming this way. Saruman wandering this way and being very dangerous indeed. Yeah, purple needs to swarm left. Like how there's brown units coming up here now. What are you doing, brown? Who is brown? <laughs> sure Brown knows what they're doing. I know, but I guess maybe we're just going? This is weird. This is a very, very weird thing. They're just going. Brown... Ah, alright, fine. I hope they're listening to me then. At least... about them or just leave them be? That is the question of the day, isn't it? got so many kills. He's having a great time. Meanwhile, purple is just... I mean, maybe you just go, honestly, brown. Like, maybe we don't even worry about this. Are there... Ooh, there's a couple things here for white, but it's not looking good. Yeah, it kind of does seem like blue's AFK, doesn't it? They're not microing at all. But they're holding so well. Like, maybe the trick for being blue here is just don't micro and you're going to hold the line. Oh, but it is Haldir. You're right. Haldir's moving around. He just doesn't care about the elves at all. Good point, DC. Hama's in trouble if he wants to sit right there, man. I don't think you do. No, there's no way to regenerate health more quickly. Swarm here. He's trying to protect against Haldir, who is honestly a major threat. Yes. I think Brown maybe needs to like mass here and then go. Because this single file stuff is not working at all. Yeah, I think purple, if he needs like either needs to mass left. Or needs to go. Well, 
lot of stewing there from Haldir. What are we nicing here? What do we miss? Did they kill Wormtongue? Uh oh, that's not good. But there's nothing on the other side of this wall. Purple needs to go. Purple hanging out here is not working out for me at all. Just go. All right, so purple's just going, which I think should have done a while ago. Because honestly, you get through this, you win. There's nothing in the caves. There's two tanks. And I think that's it. So it doesn't matter. Uh, this might be the first game I ever see where blue stays alive. Where Hollier's encampment is alive, yet good guys lose anyway. Yeah, just this. Just face mash. Kill the Goliaths. Kill the towers. Kill the archer nooks. Brown's tanks are on this right side, trying to get something done. Okay, they're right on top of the tower's left side. The right side is on fire, too. And I think that's your game. We're through here, so purple just kind of solos it. <laughs> I mean, brown kept blue occupied, but otherwise it didn't do a whole lot today. The no micro archers are not getting micro. Nope. Got Theoden stuck. He toast. Theoden, King of Rohan. Dead. Why isn't it... Oh, it doesn't announce when stuff dies to the Observer. That's why I haven't noticed when heroes are dying. Because Observer doesn't even get that notification at all. That's annoying. Yeah, blue is um, still not interested in microing all that much. Has so many kills. Like, these archers all have like 30 kills each, man. That adds up. That's your GG. <laughs> Possibly the most strange Helm's Deep I've ever seen. I've never seen purple just kind of solo it before. Where brown never got close to touching Haldir's encampment, but purple just crushed through the right side and everything in one anyway. I mean, part of it, yes. Blue does need to bring up archers and help delay here. That would have been really, really helpful, but... Yeah, I mean, we got Eowyn in here and we got Hama in here and... That's it. Bad news for the women. Yes. <laughs> Seriously, Blue. Can I play, please? Just haldering it up and nothing else. Play please, dude, what was that? Like, he won the battle, but lost the war. That was hilarious. All right, that's it. That's it for the stream today. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. That was a ton of fun. As always, come on over to the US West server, type join Falcon Paladin. And you can join the Falcon Paladin chat channel on US West, where there are people here all throughout the week. You can play with them. You can do team games. You can beat up on noobs. It's a lot of fun. So thank you for the super chats, everybody. Thank you for just, you know, keeping me company and sending me replays to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Brood War. And that's it. So thanks again, everyone. Love you all. Please take care. And we'll see you next Sunday. Same time. You can hit that notification bell to know when the streams are coming up. 
You can hit notification bell for everything now because it's only a Brood War channel. So people who have said I don't want to set up notifications because I don't want to be notified of StarCraft 2 casts, well now we have Brood War casts and that's it. So hit that notification bell. Alright, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll be out on Twitch here in about half an hour doing some StarCraft 2 Brutal campaign, the uh, Zerg campaign, Heart of the Swarm. So head over there, give me a follow on a Twitch if you're interested. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and above all, please take care of yourselves. Goodbye.